Okay, hi folks. This is a video segment that I'm preparing because of uh, a question that was raised by uh, a YouTuber, H. Kazaz, who's apparently a Katia uh, V5 uh, uh, enthusiast, but uh, is switching to uh, 3D experience, at least exploring what the prospects are. Now, the question that he had was uh, this business of uh, uh, reaction sensors or sensors in CATIA, which is at the very bottom of the tree when you do FEA, how does it translate to 3D experience? In other words, if I wanted to make a run in 3D experience and get the reaction forces and some other maybe sensors uh, which allow us to extract information, uh, how, how does it go from uh, CATIA to uh, through the experience. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, look at a specific problem, a very simple problem. So basically you have a cantilever uh, cantilever part, beam, if you want. We're going to model it with solid elements, of course, and the dimension, dimensions are given here. And on the top surface, there's one 10,000 uh, Pascal uh, load applied. And what you want to know is uh, what is the reaction force at the clamped end, uh, which is very simple. Actually, you can do hand calculation. You get 200 Newton, obviously. Uh, basically, multiply that uh, pressure by the area on the top. And then because this is constant, to find the reaction moment, all you do is you take that, that 200 Newton and place it at the uh, centroid of the top surface uh, and multiply it by the moment arm uh, from the clamped end which is uh, just uh, 100, 100 millimeters. So uh, if you take that uh, 100 millimeter, multiply it by the, by the, uh, the force, uh, net force placed at the centroid, uh, you're going to get 20 Newton meter about the y-axis. Now, uh, when I do this problem, I will do it first so that it actually will not give you the answer. It will give you a message saying that it cannot be calculated because something is missing. So then we're going to go back and in our uh, output request, we include that N force down here. See that? There's an N force down here in this list. And once we get it, we run it again. And then we use the sensor in order to get our uh, reaction force uh, as, as needed. So this is not, this is not the, a complicated problem, but it's not as obvious that it should be uh, when you when it comes to how to do it in 3D experience. Okay, so let me go ahead here and make make my uh, a rectangle, and then I'm going to pad it, of course. So here is the dimensions. This was 200 millimeter. And the width is 100. OK, exit. And then we pad it by 20 millimeters. Very good. We're going to apply material to it. So let me, uh, of, of course, to calculate reaction force and reaction moment, you don't need material. But let me assume that it's made out of steel because I have to apply some material to run FEA. So I'm going to go to my material definition. Uh, I already have, I already have created a material here. You can see that if I go to uh, this, it says it's elastic, uh, Young's modulus 200 uh, uh, gigapascal and Poisson ratio is 0.3. So I already have a material there. I'm not going to bother uh, creating it again. So let me go to my uh, uh, physical product, uh, go to tools, apply material. Get the browser, apply the material from it right there. This is the one that uh, I think that's the one that I can remember. Is it this? Yep, that, that 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 was the one that I created. Let's go back here. Material browser. Uh, right click, apply, and then I can minimize this thing. Apply it to that part and say, OK, we don't need this. And we are pretty much done as far as the part goes. Now we're going to switch to uh, structural model creation. 
So we're going to use a standard uh, mesh. Uh, all the defaults taken because that's really not the purpose of this uh, video. And uh, if you want, you can see the mesh, but anyways, that size. Uh, so we're pretty, mo pretty good here. Uh, I mean, if you want to update it to see the meshes right there. Now we're going to go to uh, structure model, structure scenario creation. We use the finite element model that we created. This is the one that we just created, that mesh, basically. All right, uh, on the procedure, let's do a static. And since I want to solve a linear problem, I just want to describe the process behind finding a reaction for forces and things like that. So we go to advanced and uncheck include geometric nonlinearity. We just want to solve a linear problem. And as far as the, the boundary condition goes, uh, this back face is clamped. So I'm going to clamp this. And on the top, I'm going to apply a pressure load. Uh, under the load, uh, this is the pressure on that top face. And uh, 10,000 Newton per meter square, which is Pascal. Good. Now, uh, this is pretty much done. So we're going to try to uh, run it. In fact, let's do first a model check. I don't think there's going to be a problem. It's a very straightforward problem. Done. And then we're going to do a, uh, a scenario check just to make sure nothing fundamentally is missing, wrong. Simulation check, actually, I called it the scenario check, simulation check. There may be some warnings, uh, but that, that's OK. It's a good idea to read these warnings, but uh, this is a fairly straightforward problem. I don't even know what this thing says. Yeah, that, that's fine. And this is done. And then we're going to run it. Now, obviously, when we run it, it's, it's going to, there's not, there's not going to be an issue. It's going to give you deflection and everything. It's a very simple, simple problem. But when we try to find out what the, actually the, uh, the, uh, the reaction force is, it's going to say, hey, you didn't ask for certain things that uh, you should have asked and therefore we're going to go back there and uh, request that <sighs> let's see for a second okay this is done all right close this now this is increment uh, uh, one, which is basically the initial condition, initial, uh, there's no, just the mesh and the applied load, and this is how it's going to look like after it depends. Now, let's go back here. Uh, now, when I go here to, down here, you see the sensors. This, these are the sensors. First of all, notice that uh, automatically certain outputs were requested. If you expand this, under the output request, Output one, if I double click on it, notice that uh, when I select the force down here, there is an end force which is unchecked. But let's, let me cancel this for a second before we actually try to put the sensor there. Before we try to put the sensor there, uh, uh, something else I want to check here. We go to the results, expand the tree under sensors. Sensors, there is a reaction sensor here, reaction force here, but it gives you the location where the maximum occurs. So, for example, if I double click on uh, maximum, it'll tell you that the maximum is uh, uh, 50, 52 Newton at some location. And uh, if you want to know exactly uh, what the location is, you double click, for example, uh, well, let's try, try Y. Uh, it says it's on the left side, because remember, the origin was here, minus 100. So it gives you the maximum location, the location of the maximum uh, reaction force uh, at a particular node, but it does give you the total. So let's cancel that. It doesn't give you the total value. When we try to get the total value, when I say 
When I click on this, it says, oh, you know, enforce is not requested. So I say, fine, let me close that. Let's go back to that uh, output that we requested over here, double click on it. As soon as you double click on it, obviously you're going to be sent back to the, uh, the uh, basically the uh, previous window where you have to uh, simulate again. So let's go under the force and we select enforce also and we say okay all right now obviously you have to uh, you can do a model check you can do a simulation check but nothing is going to change here because uh, all we did we additional requ uh, additional output request so we just run it okay This uh, slide that I showed you before is when I uh, went, I got this message, I went to output and then selected the Enforce down here. So this is running. Okay, so close this. Let's go see what happened in the case of the uh, our uh, you know uh, the tree. First of all, this is still still the same place, same things, location. Okay, I don't want that. Okay, so when I click, when I click on this icon, it no longer gives me that error message. It says okay. Where do you want to select your support? How do you want to select your support? And I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to select it based on restraint. It says, this is the only restraint that you've got. This is what you want. I say, okay. And I do not want frame one because frame one, really, there's no deformation. So I want to go to frame two. And this being checked, it shows you actually displays the uh, icon for the force and moment on the screen. And if I say apply, all right. Uh, if I go, if I go and select frame two, you can see what happened here. Let me zoom in. Right here. So it says that uh, 238 newton, and the moment is uh, 30. That's a gigantic moment. So I wonder what we did wrong. I must have done something wrong. Uh, we, we're going to go check it out. We're going to go check it out. But uh, I don't like the fact that this moment is so big and this uh, uh, this force is not 200. It should come out to be 200 unless I inputted something incorrectly. We're going to find out. Uh, now, a uh, couple of things here. Uh, let's see now here. We got additional uh, lines in our tree. Uh, for example, we have uh, resultant force. If I if I double click on the, uh, the, the, the force Z, I should be getting that 238. Actually, it should be 200, but we'll find out why later. Yeah, 238. And if I double click a moment about Y, I should be getting this giant, uh, 24, oh, 24 Newton meters. Okay, okay. So it's not very far actually from, uh, it's not very far from my 20 value of 20 newton meter. However, I want to know what the difference is. I suspect uh, did we use the correct geometry? So let's say okay. Uh, but anyway, it shows you the steps that you need to do in order to get the reaction force. Uh, namely, you have to request additional. Uh, uh, what is that? Uh, you have to request additional data and force output. Okay, and then you have to go here. Uh, now, uh, select select your uh, uh, support by restraint. Make sure that you choose uh, the proper frame because if you do frame one, every time you try, it's going to come out to be zero. Okay, so I change this thing to frame two. And uh, yeah, so let me go and check my geometry here. I don't like the fact that I'm not getting pretty much exactly what it's supposed to be. Let's go back to that geometry and check our dimensions. So we are in, uh, 
uh, part we go to our sketch make sure it is it is actually 200 uh, let me deactivate these plots uh, where is this uh, deactivate this and hide it to oh there it is you see that this should have been 100. If I make this thing 100, everything is come out, going to come out to be right. So I'm sorry, just uh, uh, if, if you look at, if you do the calculation based, based on 200 and 120, you see that you get exactly those numbers that uh, we got in uh, 3D experience. Not hard, but, but you know, it's not as uh, obvious that it should be either. Uh, good luck.